Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is uh, Erwin Blom. I'm a, a journalist, a trained journalist. Um, and um, doing this, I have to, uh, I, uh, yeah, this reminds me of the first time I made radio. I wasn't nervous at all uh, to start with. Uh, and then it was, uh, say, eight o'clock uh, at night, and I had to start talking. And then I realized there are a hundred thousand people or something that are listening now. So everything that goes wrong is going wrong in all those houses. I had a little bit of that feeling when someone of the organization said there are uh, 500 um, uh, people will be watching. And not only because of that, because you don't have any feedback, but as well uh, because. Um, you're a tech, uh, you're a tech uh, crew, technological crew, and I uh, have worked a lot in the in in the technology world. I uh, I worked for the VPRO, that's a Dutch public broadcasting organization, and I was the head of the new media department there. So we had programmers, we had designers, and all stuff like that. But I myself, I'm uh, not a tech not a, a techy guy. I'm not technological schooled. But I've been uh, doing stuff like this for the last uh, couple of decades. As you see, I'm, uh, I'm not young. I grew up in the late 70s. I grew up in the days of punk music. And to me, what I learned then uh, has uh, remained important uh, uh, since. And uh, I will start with talking about a little bit of uh, music um, uh, in, in this talk. But of course, later on, we will uh, go to the technological sides, to the software, to the tools we have uh, nowadays. As you see over there, uh, do it yourself is the theme in uh, my life as well in, the mu in my musical life as in my, um, uh, yeah, my present life where I help companies uh, 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 innovate. That's what I basically try to do. So what has happened, of course, during the last couple of centuries is that um, the democratization of everything, so to say, first uh, media, technology, etc. everything is cheaper, everything is easier. Um, so every, everyone or almost everyone can use a lot, of a lot of the tools. And because of that, because more people can use the tools, uh, it unleashes creativity and it helps people to be in, in control of the ideas they have, the things they want to make. Uh, etc. Um, it's a personal story I'm telling you. Uh, like I said, I have ideas, but I have no technical uh, skills. And um, during the last couple of decades, uh, stuff became cheaper and easier, etc. So I could do more. Uh, and that helped me a lot. And it helped me in four phases uh, in my uh, life, four periods. And um, uh, I want to go first to 1977 with you. 1977, like I said, uh, this, this is when I was young. This is uh, not what I looked like, but almost, because this is a group called uh, The Clash. They were a big band in those days. And what happened in that period was uh, people without technical skills, uh, people that could hardly play an instrument, started playing instruments, started forming bands. They said, the uh, ideas are more important than the technical skills uh, we have. We have got really good ideas. We can make good tunes. We can make uh, impressive music. And that's what we are going to do. No one was interested in that in, in the start. No record company was interested. Uh, so what do you do then? You start your own band. If there is no record company interested, you do it yourself. You start your own label. Uh, if you have your own label, and there are no magazine interested in the music. You start your own magazine. You start your own clubs. You start your own everything. That was the, the, the whole atmosphere in those days. So I still like the music. But the most important thing to me was the attitude. Um, take your chances. Do the things you want to do. Do the things you want to believe in, uh, etc. And, and, and because of that, it became a whole youth movement. Uh, it was an explosion of creativity, new ideas, uh, exploring new routes, especially if you don't know how to do stuff, you do stuff different. And that, uh, well, changed my life uh, forever. I saw something um, alike 11 years later. Then came house music. 
And uh, to me, that felt more or less the same. The music was totally different, of course, because it was all with um, rhythm boxes, with bass synth lines, with computers and stuff, and not with guitars and, and, and all those things. And, 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 and um, the song structures were completely different from what we uh, had knew, known before that. But it started with um, getting technology and do something different with it. Because then we had a so-called 303 acid um, uh, bass sort of machine. It was made to make uh, normal bass sounds, but people started started to misuse the equipment, and then a whole new sound uh, came up. A whole new sound was there, and that was house music. Like with punk music, people didn't understand it. Uh, the, the the present. Uh, press the present people. So what do you do then? You start doing it yourself again. So in house you saw the same sort of explosion of uh, creativity, of new ideas, of in, especially in the beginning, great people, great minds met with the, the, the people with the same sort of ideas and, and spirit come together, starting labels again, starting magazines again. Um, and and what the, the two genres as well had, of course, there was the community aspect that was really important. Uh, people that are more or less the same as you, bring them together bring in clubs, in, um, in uh, places where the raves were being held, et cetera. This was another explosion of creativity and taking control of your own life. If all the people don't do it, we just do it ourselves. And if we can't do it, we will learn it. That was the idea. Then it was 1994. I was working for the VPRO then. I was a, a, a journalist and I immediately uh, um, was interested when our company started their own um, uh, internet uh, department because I saw that same sort of um, explosion of creativity and ideas and changing the world, etc. Uh, on the internet, what I'd seen before in punk and in uh, in in in, uh, in house music, it had the, the promise of a totally different and better world. Well, maybe the better world we can uh, well, we can discuss about that, of course. But a different world for sure. So I, as a journalist, I saw the options. I thought, hey, now I can make my own magazine on the, the internet. Now I can start my own label on the internet. Now I can have a, a radio station on the internet. Of course, as you all know, if you were around then. Um, it's every, everything sounded uh, awful in the beginning. The, the the video bits was crap, but you saw the promise, and now we all have uh, uh, and now we find it normal to um, to watch Netflix and stuff like this. So in 1994, I had that same feeling uh, I'd I'd had all those years uh, before when uh, Punk came and when uh, House came. We do it yourself and do it together as well. Those bits are both important. So uh, build what you need, start what you need, et cetera, and do it together as a sort of a movement. And to me, that's, that's what it felt like in the early days of, uh, of the internet. So um, it was, that was great. And at a certain stage, I became the head of uh, the new media department of the VPRO. And I... We, we, we had our own CMS, uh, it was called MMBase in those days, it's, it's not around anymore, but that changed my life as well because it, I, because of the, the open source movement, I saw the power of sharing, the power of doing stuff together. And what I've always found really intriguing is the combination of uh, giving stuff away and at the same time with a different sort of product, making money. That, that the two elements of the that, that uh, th those two elements of open source I've already always found really intriguing, and it was my job to uh, open source our own um, CMS, uh, the, the the just mentioned um, MM base. So to me, it was those the three periods I've just told you about felt the same, but. I was lucky. I was the head of the department of the um, uh, of the VPR, or the new media department, and we had 25 people working there or something. So maybe five or six uh, programmers, a couple of interaction designers, a couple of project leaders, etc. So I was lucky because 
all the ideas I had or we had, we could build, we could make them ourselves. Um, but I couldn't do it anymore on my own. The DIY bit with uh, CMSs, with programming languages, etc., that disappeared for me. Digitization started as giving me more freedom, and that freedom was in, as a radio maker, I was the first to start um, editing with uh, Pro Tools, dig digital editing. I was the first one with that, and it helped me a lot because I need, didn't need uh, a professional engineer anymore. I could do everything on my own at home. And then the video came, same story. I didn't need an expensive uh, editor. I could do everything at home. First uh, website with, with well, my, my, my uh, uh, limited uh, knowledge of HTML, I could, could build that. But in this phase, the phase I just mentioned, I always needed other people. And of course, it's nice to work with other people. But when you are on your own, as I was when I left the VPRO, you um, have to have money or other people that want to do it for free or whatever it is. So everything became more complex for me. My own simple ideas, I couldn't realize them on my own. And that was, to be honest, uh, a little bit of frustrating thing because I really like to just try things and see how it goes, see how it works, see if people like it, uh, etc. So there was a phase where technology started to hinder me again, I have to admit. Until, say, last year, or maybe it was 2018, I don't know, when the first time people started talking about uh, no code. Um, uh, as you know, uh, no code is a... Uh, the idea is it there are tools for me, I want to say, people that know don't know how to code but have ideas can realize them with a, a lot of tools that are around uh, nowadays. Uh, there are all, it, it is a sort of a uh, difficult uh, a theme to be honest because it, it, it's really, you have no code, you have low code and in low code you still need to be able to program but I want to focus on the stuff that I can use and I can't code at all. And some of them you see over here, for example, Adalo is a tool where you can make uh, apps uh, with. Um, Glide is one, I will tell you later about that. Of course, Air Airtable um, is a flexible tool to make your database of information, which, which you can then present in all sorts of ways. So it feels a little bit with logic in it, etc. It feels a little bit as an uh, app as well. Uh, and you've got, for example, Bubble. And Bubble, to be honest, is not for me. It's too complex uh, already. Uh, but the, 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 the theme of all those tools is that it makes tools cheaper, makes tools easier, makes it faster to develop stuff for the rest of the world. You guys are all technical guys, so uh, I'm jealous of you. Uh, and you can build uh, the stuff you need, you want. I couldn't do that until, say, last year. And a lot of the things I want to build, I can build now with the tools you see here. So for me, it feels a little bit uh, as if I'm, I've gone um, full circle. Uh, I started in those early uh, in those early punk days with making stuff myself with my friends, starting labels, starting clubs, starting studios, uh, etc. In a, in a broader perspective, I can make a lot of things I couldn't do uh, a year or two years ago. And um, of course, it is not going to replace any of you. It is helping me to the stuff uh, that that uh, the ideas I have, uh, because if I make something and 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 I have that idea, there will always be limitations with tools like this. They are really good to make sort of minimal viable products, making prototypes, making first versions, and with those first versions, you can go to an audience, uh, see what they like, see what they want different, if they want to pay for it, and if you have the proof, have you have the validation that there is an audience for it, then becomes the moment where you think, is 
eh, the tool I use now enough or do I want more to be specific? Do I need extra uh, bits and elements that um, uh, I can't make myself? And then that, and, and, and in that stage, of course, uh, I need all you <laughs> again. So it's not replacing something, it's making, um, it, it is, uh, making stuff available for a bigger audience, uh, I want to say. I'll give you a couple of examples, stuff I work with uh, at the moment. Uh, Glide is one I like a lot. Uh, Glide uses at the moment a, a Google Sheet, but they, they are getting rid of Google Sheets so that they have their own sort of database, but they use Google Sheet as the database. So if you can, can put data in a spreadsheet, uh, you can start uh, more or less. And then in Glide, you decide what it looks like, what the functionality is, what happens when you click on this, click on that, etc. And to be honest, you can do pretty uh, complex stuff as well because you can do complex stuff in a spreadsheet, but you don't need to. It's even possible to make uh, uh, yeah, e easy stuff. So uh, I help uh, people uh to to learn to to to, to use uh, tools like this and for example there was an, uh, a really old lady that made a small app for um, the neighborhood she lived in she grew up in and she she's collecting the stories of all the houses and that's the, basically what it is a really small but a very relevant tool for a, a tiny audience and she could make that uh, on her own and of course when you see it it, it, it is not a really complex thing, and it's and you, you may and it's well, it's really simple, but it just does the job for this small audience, and that is what I like. So that type of tool apps would never have been built in another without the no code tools, because because then it would cost money, etc. Now it doesn't cost her at all; it just costs her a week of learning how to do it. Um, I really like uh, uh, Glide a lot as one of the tools. Uh, and like I said, I've, I'm, I'm um, a media maker, so I like the whole podcast world as well. When I was the first one at my VPRO to start with, um, uh, with, with digital editing, with Pro Tools, it was really expensive in those days. In Guilders, it was 15,000 Guilders for a second-hand Mac and a Pro Tools set. And now you don't need any of that equipment anymore with your uh, iPhone or your Android phone, or whatever you use. You can start recording, you can do easy edits, you can uh, insert music. So you can make radio programs. The radio programs I used to make in the past, everyone can make now uh, without any budget. So uh, the only limitation uh, are your ideas and, and your persistence. Are you going to do it and, and, and are you keep on doing it? Because starting is easy, but uh, keep on going is the hard part of everything and 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 that is what 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 i find so intriguing now uh, so there are no barriers anymore if you have the ideas you can make a lot um so then it's a, a level playing field where the best ideas combined with the best executions um well uh Wind, uh, so so to say, between brackets. I have to say, because making an, 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 uh, a podcast for only your family can be very valuable as well. I really like the small, uh, the, the 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 niche uh, stuff to make. I like that a lot. Um, if you want to start a community, you have a group of, of people that have the same goals, that have the same passion, that have the, uh, the same interest. You go to a, a, a tool called Circle or a tool called Tribe, and it looks really good. It works really good, and everything is in, in there. You don't have to build anything. You go there, start your account, and you have your community up and running later today. Uh, and, of course, all the, the examples I gave us, Starting a community, as you all know, is easy uh, as well. But making it a lively community is um, is is a lot is in a complex uh, thing, um, and keep keeping it going is a complex thing. Uh, like I say, you 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 will know that yourself with the whole Drupal uh, community. Um, but the technology is not the hurdle anymore. You can start with this um, if you uh, want today. Another one, Share Tribe. 
Um, what I like so much is, and that's what I what I see when I do those sort of uh, courses, uh, sort of courses with people. What hinders you in your ideas is the idea that something that you're going to build is expensive. Uh, say, for example, when I used to ask people, companies, what, what does it cost to make this and that? And it always started around, say, 70,000 euros. And then you think, yeah, well, I don't have 70,000 euros, so, so I can't use this. But when you know that stuff can, you can start with stuff cheap as well, then your creativity starts to work uh, more uh, intense than it did before. Because when you know that you can start your own marketplace for, uh, um, what is it? I think 60 or 70 euros a month, and you can make your own variation of Airbnb or whatever you want, uh, then you do it and then you try it and then you see if that is what is, if, if it works, if there's an audience for it, are people willing to do, to do this? Can you find an audience? And you are going to do that for a small amount of money. You're not going to do that easily for a, lot, for, for a big amount of money. For example, there are people that with this tool, with ShareTribe, started a marketplace for studios and artists. So on the one hand, you have all the studios there and artists that are looking for a studio to, to, to record an album in. You know, whatever country they like, they can find it there. And it's, so this is a one person uh, project, one person company, but he, he lives from this uh, marketplace. Uh, and there are all sorts of uh, things, small, etc. cetera. Um, but like I said, it helps you if you know that what all the things you can do with a, a, with a small amount of starting money, then uh, it's what you, uh, what you're going to do. You see other options, you see other possibilities. So it, it, uh, if you, the, the barrier is low, then the creativity uh, is, is high. That's what you see uh, happening. Your event is uh, is on the, the Hopin uh, platform uh, as well, platform, and, and it's one of the examples, of course. Um, I think it costs uh, what is it, a uh, hundred euro or a hundred dollars a month. But if you want to do your online event and if you want to sell tickets, you can do it as well. Then you can start today. Um, um, watch a, a couple of the um, the uh, the explainer videos. And you can, uh, you're up and running. It's another of the examples that uh, everything is in the cloud. Everything is available for uh, a reasonable amount of money. And like I said, it's, what makes it so special is that you can try stuff with this. If you see there's an audience for it, if you see that there are people willing to pay for this, then is the moment you can say, okay, are we going to do it? Is it good enough? Or do we want it better? Do we want it different? And um, are we going to invest in it? And th those are a couple of the examples uh, out of my uh, own uh, uh, life because uh, uh, this is what I do a lot. I have a lot of ideas, and then it's Saturday afternoon, and I think let's let's build build something. Um, product school, product school is the name of the online uh, educational service, so to say, where I help people um, building stuff. So going from an idea to a product, to launching it, finding an audience. And we do that with all no code uh, tools. And I build everything with the same no code tools as well. So the proof is in, uh, in the product school itself. I have a website and I did build that with a uh, ghost and ghost makes it really easy to have a good looking uh, website. I use a platform that's called Podia and it's made to um, make online classes and online courses. Uh, um, uh, of course I use a service like car to make one pages and I, uh, and I teach people that they should start with making a really good one pager for the product they have in mind because that helps you making your ideas small and clear and 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 only a one pager and even only with a one pager you can do validation of your product you can go to an audience and say hey look this is what i want to start what do you think of it what do you miss uh, is that too much uh, are you willing to pay for it so making one pages is a really good starting point for new products and uh, 
and new services. And CART is there, a good tool for, and at the, the right hand side, you see two of the examples of uh, apps, I should say web apps, because that's what it is. Web apps are built with uh, Glide. And um, I always start with building something for myself, something I need or someone I know needs. For example, on the left-hand side, you see the, the, the app that is called On Tour. My children are in a band and before COVID, they were playing a lot. So they were touring around the whole world and they uh, needed a place where they could easily see where to go to, they could easily put in what they'd sold as merchandise and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, so I made it for them. Uh, and, and then they gave me, a, um, well, sent me an email or whatever they did. And when they missed something, I added that to the app. And at a certain stage, I thought, well, if it's interesting, if it's valuable for them, why not make it uh, available for other artists as well? And um, Glide has got a template store, so uh, you can, of course, offer their stuff for free and you can ask money for it. I said, well, let's see if people are willing to pay for this. So I um, um, asked, I think, uh, 10 euros something for it. And what people can then do is they can use this, but because of Glide, they can change it all the way around as well. So they can add their own stuff to it or can uh, leave stuff away or whatever. And uh, I was looking the other day and I think I made 500 uh, euros, no big money, of course, but it's, this is a, a hobby in my uh, spare time. And, uh, and it shows that there is an audience for it. The rest ha uh, right hand side uh, with my family, we all, uh, once a year, we do a sort of a pop quiz around uh, uh, Christmas. And uh, I build an app for that so people can do the, the, the voting and stuff and all the things, you, the stuff you need to do in a quiz, they can do that in an app. And then, then we immediately see we, who's, who's the winner, etc. And I did the same thing. I made it for ourselves and I thought, well, why not made it, make it uh, for other people available so you can buy this one in the store. It's only three euros. And I think I sold now something like for a thousand euros no big money, but it's quite funny that um, me as a non-technical guy can uh, put his ideas into products that people are willing to pay for. Um, I think I've said it, but I want to repeat this a, li a little bit. Um, so, so why is it important to me? Um, first place, it's important to me because the do DIY aspect, the do-it-yourself aspect. I uh, don't want to rely too much on other people. I want to be able to make stuff, make ideas myself. And like I told you, there was a period where it was difficult for me, but now there's a period again where I can make most of the stuff I want. And of course, like I said, you have to see it as a sort of minimal viable products, as prototypes, and they are ideal to rapid develop and test, validate, and build, uh, and change again, or stop with it, etc. Uh, maybe that is the best thing to, to, to the best way to see it, and, and it is ideal for that. Um, but a lot of the things I don't, I wouldn't need any anything else as well. So then it's it's enough. But uh, even if you don't want to make finished products, it helps you to by building it helps you get a better idea better grip of the end product yourself is this what i want when i want uh, and is this what i need and ask it other people um what i like so much about it and i think i gave the examples myself normally if you build stuff and if you invest in stuff it has to be for or a big uh, with, with the ambition of, you, you, uh, of, of getting to a lot of people, of you're a big company and you can invest in it because it's, it's valuable for your company. But with the tools there are now, you can solve your own problems or your own problems for your own company. Um, I mean, uh, it doesn't cost anything. It only costs me my time. So if I need something, if I need an app to go on holiday, and, and like I did in the beginning of the year when we go to Thailand, then I make a small app that is only for me uh, for uh, and, and only valuable for me and my family. But I can build it then and I can do it because of the low cost, the easiness of uh, producing, uh, et cetera. And you will see that tools like this will help so much in 
people solving their own problems that do it do it do it yourself they make stuff that are only uh, can only be uh, valuable for their own company for their own um for the, for the, for their own people um and 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 that's all what it needs to be and then you will see so many different uh, tools when we make it or we the people that make it make it easy enough um and, and and because of that you get because you know it's possible you get extra ideas you get more ideas and we will see there will be so much more creativity on all fields um uh well uh become available so what people will do and it's one thing i need to say of course is uh let's face it i it, they, the tools are called no code tools but of course you technical people, you coders, build that stuff. Uh, so the, the whole, uh, the technology under the no-code tools is of course very much uh, code, uh, code base and uh, technical people working for it. So um, for me, I don't have to know how it works. I don't have to know uh, what, what the language is, uh, etc. I can ju just build and the technical people to the, uh, the 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 lay uh, the base uh, so to say they um, that they, they are very technical or the guys from glide for example they're really good programmers uh, to do that okay this is why it's for me uh, important but um what 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 does it mean for you uh, well th there are a couple of things the first one is you don't want to be good in everything as well you don't want to spend a lot of time in everything you do as well so it helps you if you um, uh, can focus on what you're good at and uh, and 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 where you need your the most of your time and besides that you can use the no-code tools to make that easy uh, minimal viable product or make that one page you need or start that community to um, get your uh, your crowd, your, your your customers, your friends, whatever it is, uh, talking and, and going. So you don't have to spend time on that aspect. You only spend your time on where you're, the, where you're best at. But it's th something I think is even more uh, interesting. Um, when people start building stuff themselves they start better uh, they understanding how stuff works for example uh, even in a spreadsheet for glide you need to get an idea about how do you do that how do you um, structure uh, data in the best way to, so that you can in a, uh, you you you, get, you you can get the answers for the questions you have, or that makes it easy um, to um, to build that app on the other side. Uh, so if people do that, if they start using those tools, they start you 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 have more common ground. Uh, so when, when they come to you and when they want something complex uh, at least they understand something about uh, a database something about how you structure data something about that um, if you want to have a, a user interface uh, that you should do that simple and stylish and etc so i think because more people start making stuff start building stuff they start Understanding, of course, in in a, in, a, in a simple way, in a basic way, start understanding your world better, and that way it makes it easier to uh, well to communicate uh, around the products that are uh, being built. And then I want to finish off uh, finish off more or less with 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 a uh, uh, very important thing. Um, I, I, to be honest, I have to say that it, it was not a success. We, 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 for all reasons, we didn't succeed. But I had an idea at a certain stage. Uh, one of the frustrations for me with with open source tools is I understand why it is, but it's being built by technical people to solve the problems they have themselves. Um, and if that is what it does. It's a great tool because you, you you know how it works, you know what to do, and it's and it's great for you. But I am that non-technical guy. 
I don't know how to install stuff and, and, and et cetera. So I always feel more or less uh, left out uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in that world because I can't even start. Starting is even too, uh, too complex for me. And I, um, I started uh, um, an initiative called Stack where what we wanted to do is make a place where you can do one-click installments uh, of all sorts of open source tools there are. So you get your own dashboard with those tools and then you can start working. And then we would do explanations with people. How do you make more of these tools, etc.? Well, there are all reasons for it, but we, we, we didn't, uh, uh, the, the, the three of us didn't, uh, I think, explore enough the possibilities uh, of it. But at the same time, you can say, um, uh, it, at, at the same time, the whole no-code movement came came up. But I think you lot, the people from the, the lot, the open source tools, it would help me. Let's maybe say it like that, to, to have a sort of a a, a, a user-friendly no-code la layer for people like me. And I was thinking today about this. I was thinking maybe the way Apple does it. Apple says if you're new. In video, we've got iMovie, and it makes it easy for you to make your own movie. And if you want more, if you want to do more complex stuff, we've got Final Cut Pro. And Final Cut Pro can build upon the iMovie um, uh, 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 project. So you can import that project in Final Cut, and then you can start and do comp really complex stuff uh, if, you're, if you're good at that. Same thing for audio. If you're a beginner, you start with GarageBand, and um, uh, and if you want more, you import the GarageBand project into your Logic, and in Logic you can do really complex stuff. I would be so happy uh, if if there would be a, a come a future where you could say for an, we ha we have say the Drupal or whatever uh, it is for beginners, and I am the ultimate beginner in all those things. So I can do simple stuff with it. In a sort of a visual way, I can build stuff. And if I need more uh, or I want more, I can, or, or I can put more time in it or I, I can hire some of you and we go a level deeper. But I'm, I'm hoping so much that the, the, that the open source world, of course, the basic is you technical guys, you make stuff. But if we could make the tools available to a bigger audience, it would mean a lot to me. Because what I don't see happening at the moment is any no-code tools or real no-code tools in, in the uh, with an open source uh, component. Uh, and uh, well, I don't have to explain you, but uh, we all know why open source is valuable and important and etc. Because let's face it. Um, uh, Bytes, the Google Bytes Glide, the my, my great to tool is gone. I hear myself, so that means it's the end of my story. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Erin. Can Hello, you hear me? Hi. Hey, thank you very much. This is a really, really great talk. Um, can you uh, tell me if you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. Hey, um, obviously, it is a great question. Uh, sorry, it is a great uh, talk by you. Um, it also is clear from all the feedback we get in the uh, in the chat. And there's even way too many questions coming in to answer them all here. So I, I picked one question. And this question is asked by Rachel Lawson from the UK. Uh, welcome, Rachel. Uh, Rachel is asking you, I'm, I'm uh, reading out loud here. We notice that people with great ideas often sit back and are unsure about starting an initiative because they feel they need permission. How can we best remind people that no permission is needed? Can you answer that question? Yeah, well, the, my, my uh, um, because I hear the echo, I have to pretend I don't hear anything. So I, <laughs> I'll, do it, I'll do it like this. Um, what, what I, the, the times I've tried it in, in the in, in open source world, I think we should, uh, should not first develop people, but uh, you should ask people at the beginning of the development. So if you, uh, I think it's really valuable if you have diverse 
uh, team and whatever you do in diversity means a lot of things, but diverse can mean as well. You have the expert, the specialist, and then and the, the, uh, the non technical, the new, because the way it goes now, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not part, I don't feel part of the community. Then people say, yeah, but you can do uh, bug fixing or whatever it is. Now I don't want to do bug fixing. I have an idea about how um, the whole thing could be, uh, well, be better maybe, or, or for certain circumstances. So I think the most important thing is, I think, try to uh, give people the feeling of co-ownership. And now we don't have, uh, you don't have the feeling of co-ownership. You, you have the feeling of a user that is allowed to give some um, feedback. And I think it should be uh, more that you feel it's, it's, it's our tool, it's our environment. Yeah, okay, well, thank you very much. That's really uh, cool cool feedback. Um, I, I must say there were a lot more interesting questions, as I said. Um, uh, Mark van Gent, uh, uh, Lavery van Buel, uh, you all came with great questions. Uh, we ran out of time here, so I uh, really would like to um, uh, well, tell everybody to go to uh, the, uh, the tool we have and all the questions that you have. Uh, Erwin will uh, love to answer them. And I'm, I'm sure, Erwin, that you will like uh, the questions you saw there. So thank you, thank you very much for this great talk. Uh, a round of applause uh, for this. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Have a good, uh, have a good day. Stay safe. <laughs>